During my homily on Ash Wednesday, I talked about the basic Christian story and how it essentially begins with a very simple observation, that something is seriously wrong with the world in which we live. In our theological language, we call it sin. But as I've said before, I don't particularly care what word you use for it. I know that for some, sin is a loaded and guilt-inducing term. So if naming the problem differently is important to you, so be it. The basic observation still remains. There is something disordered with the world we live in, and that includes all of us. Today, I want to revisit the basic origin story of sin, the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas. Just as I really don't care what you call it, whether you call it sin or something else, I also don't particularly care whether you understand the story of Adam and Eve as a historical story of two actual human beings or as a parable of two stand-in representatives for all humanity. The theological impact of the story is the same either way. It is a second creation story whose concern is the intrusion of sin or corruption in the world. Where does that corruption come from? What is the nature of that corruption? And what is the relationship between God, God the Creator, and this now corrupted creation? The story begins with the creation of a man, Adam whose name is actually a cognate for the Hebrew word for earth or dirt. This makes sense, for God creates the man by scooping up some dirt from the ground and breathing the breath of life into his lungs. God places the man in a paradise where all of his needs are met. There's only one caveat. He may not eat the fruit of one single tree. The fruit of the other trees are all fair game. God then decides it is not good for the man to be alone, so God creates animals and trots them before the man to see what he would name them. But then God realizes that none of the animals is a fit companion for the man, so he puts the man into a deep sleep, removes one of his ribs, and makes a woman who is a fit companion. The man responds with joy, saying, This at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And with that, creation is essentially complete. Humankind and animals living together in a paradise called Eden. Now, being a great story, you just know, even if you'd never heard or read the story, that this is not the end of the story. Now comes the problem. All good stories involve a problem. Things quickly go awry. A serpent emerges as a crafty creature and tempts the woman to eat the fruit of that forbidden tree. She does, and then she shares it with her partner, Adam. Then they see that they are naked and they make clothes for themselves, essentially to hide themselves from one another. That's where we pick up the story. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. The Lord said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. This reads to me, for all the world, just like a story of little children getting into trouble and trying to cover up their guilt. There are, I think, essentially three elements to what they've done which nicely encapsulate a lot of what sin is all about. First, they disobey. There was only one stipulation about life in paradise. Don't eat the fruit of that particular tree. Well, tell a child not to touch something, and of course the first thing the child wants to do is touch that very thing. 
Just making it something forbidden also makes it desirable. Second, they hide, they hide in order to keep from getting found out. God comes walking in the garden and asks, why are they hiding? Now, to his credit, Adam fesses up to a certain extent, saying, I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And then third, they blame everyone but themselves. They do their best not to take responsibility. Adam not only blames Eve, he blames God as well. The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. He doesn't even call the woman by name. I take this to be not so much an origin story as a story about what sin looks like. Willful disobedience, avoidance, blaming others. Almost any sin I can imagine falls within one of these three categories. So like I say, call it sin or call it whatever you like. It is the story of human life. And during Lent, we need to come to terms with what it looks like in our own lives. And now may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.